Hi there, Justin from sharepickers.com here. I'm going to do a little video on uh, moving averages. I'm no expert, but I did get an email saying uh, you get some technical analysis on the show, on the podcast, and you talk a lot about moving averages. What is it all about? So this is a basic video for people who uh, want to learn the basics of moving averages. All right, like I said, I'm no expert, but I have been looking at charts for years. And uh, I, every now and again, I mess around with it and stuff. But I, I've I stuck the indicators I like, and uh, it's becoming familiar with what, what you like and what you need. You know, what you read on a chart becomes consistent, I suppose. So here we are. Um, I'm at a, you know Google here, and I tell you what, Carl, I do like I do use Pro Real Time, which is uh, probably the leading online charting software. But that in itself can be a bit complex. All right, so I'll do another video on Pro Real Time. Like I said, I'm no expert on that either. But I've been using it regularly recently, and I've only been using it for like six months. But uh, more uh, often than not, I've been using it more regularly uh, of late. So anyway, let's go into um, a, a, a site called Investing.com. So uh, click here, and it's a cracking site. You know, it's a good app to have. I quite like it. It's free. So you set up a little account there, and uh, then you go to this box at the top here and type in the stock you want to look at. I'm going to type in uh, Standard Chartered because that's a company. I bought this week. I'll show you why on the chart. So when you do that, you get the page here. You get everything from the technicals to the fundamentals. Uh, what we need is to click this technical chart here. So click that there, and then bring up this page. Think, well, that's that isn't too technical. What's going on there? And it isn't. You're right. So first of all, let's make it a big screen. So there we are, and this is a line chart, and um, it's not very handy. It shows you a, a general look at the chart price. We're at 493 at the moment down here. And this is, is what adds the volume in. Uh, so you can take that out if you want by clicking the little X here. So there we go. That's the share price. Now, what I want to do is click this. And that says candles. Wow. What does that mean? Now, listen, when technical analysts look at a chart, uh, I've had a lot of people say there's nothing more powerful than the price action of a share. That means by looking at the price and looking at certain patterns, you can sort of figure out where the share is going. This is before you add any indicators, like moving averages or relative strength or volume, because the price tells you everything is happening, you know? But sometimes moving averages help. And let's just not forget, the price is there real time. It's happening, you know? Moving averages, a relative strength, you know, uh, MACD, they are lagging indicators. They're what's happened, you know? Not what is happening but they're still very handy. So uh, if I just look at the, if you don't know anything about candles, I'll quickly do a lesson on this. Listen, you can buy books on candles, honestly. Uh, massive tombs as well. So I'll, I'll give you a, a quick rundown if you're not quite sure what candles mean. So the red candles are days where the share price has gone down. Green are where the share price has gone up. And uh, the body of the candle, like it is in red, that means uh, the open is the top of the body. And the close is the bottom of the body on red candles. It's the opposite, of course, on green candles. So the bottom of the body is uh, the open. The top of the candle is the close. Now, you'll see little wicks on the end. That's the range of the day. So if I, if I scroll in, for example, uh, this day here, very bullish day, very good day for the stock. It basically opened here, went all the way up here and closed. There's, I don't think there's any bigger range, a tiny bit of a wick in the bottom there, but pretty much the full day went up. That's all it did. That's a very good sign, very strong, powerful sign there that it's a bullish sign. And you can see the day after, it even gapped up. There's a big gap here. Um, so on a, on a, the opposite kind of candle, that's what you can see there. If most of the body is full, then it opened up there, finished all the way down. It went up a little bit here. So listen, what's, what's the price over here? 462, it opened up. It went up to... Uh, 474, uh, yeah, 469, and then went down to 426. So this is the price action, and this is called a double bottom here. And I'll tell you why this has happened. We're talking about uh, you know a level you haven't seen in standard chart. It's in 1998. That's where it is right now. Uh, so you can see it was climbing down. The prices going two days up, two days down. This is called indecision. It's a tiny body. Uh, well, it's called Doji, essentially the candle. But there's a big range compared to the body. That's where buyers and sellers were basically having a tussle. The share price didn't know where to go, and it sort of closed a little bit higher. You know, sometimes you get no body, you get a little line there. That's all you get, no body. And that, that, that's where, you know, the share price went up and down and ended up in the middle there somewhere. Didn't know where to go. Next day, it ended up bearish. So look at this. This little candy is quite telling. It's like, uh, on, on a, in my simple mind, it's like dropping uh, an, a cork 
into some water. It goes down, there's a surface of water there, goes under the water, pops back up. Next day, very bullish. All right? So you think, right, that could have been a bottom there because it didn't like going down there. It didn't naturally like being down there. Next day, gapped up. It was so bullish. Then we have a, a, a natural pullback here. Uh, a try for a, a bullish rate. Didn't reach the highs of a previous high last couple of days. And so we have a bearish candle again here. Bearish again goes up. But uh, we're seeing here, you know, lower highs. I mean, the highs of the day are lower. That's not a good thing. And we got a lower high again. And then all of a sudden, right back down, almost exactly like this one, you see? But this low here wasn't as low as this low. And then next day we had a bit, a bit of a bullish uh, candle there, you know, traded up a little bit, but still, you know, engulfed by this bearish one. And next day, pop, wham, back up to there. And that's what we see here, a double bottom. It tested the low here, came back up, uh, top of it, it's like a W, W, one, two, three, four. Test the uh, level here, came back down, tested the low for a second time, didn't go any lower, and all of a sudden shot back up. Almost this candle had been as bullish as this one, and it's gone back up again. All right, so you can see it's quite a, a bullish sign here. We've had a test. This could be a double bottom where we could have seen the low of standard charted. That's what I liked. Now, this is even without moving averages. Let's add some moving averages on. And you go up here to the little indicator, and you just click there, and a huge list of indicators comes up. All right, it's massive. You can go all through these. I've tried and failed with most of these indicators. Uh, so let's add, let's go down and add moving averages. And uh, let's click. You can get exponential, but I go for I go for simple because it works for me. Click once, it'll add one. Click twice, add two. Three times, four times, it's added four moving averages. By default, they're all nine days. That means nine days of uh, price is added up and divided by nine. So you get an average of the price the last nine days. The last nine days, okay? And then as that moves on to the next day, of course, the last day in that nine day, nine day range gets knocked off and a new one gets added to the front. So we have a changing average for every day, all right? Now, I don't like nine day. It's a bit of nonsense. Don't really use it. So I got you to click the little um, cog button here. Uh, type 20. You can type start. I like to add my 20 in a green. Give it a bit of thickness. Okay, let me see the 20-day moving average is there. Next one down, let's go to uh, 50. And these are pretty much default, you know, uh, moving averages. Nothing special about these. Um, yeah, don't mind that style, that's all right. Uh, let's go let's add up a bit. Click OK. Next one I like is the 125. Now, this is not a common one. A lot of people don't mess around with this one too often. I quite like it. I just, you know, experimented, and I quite like what it shows. So let's go to, I like to give this a pink color. There we go, pink hue. Let's take it up a bit of thickness. Click OK. And then the fourth one is the classic. It's uh, a 200 day moving average. And on a basic level, people say when the price is above a 200 day moving average, it's very bullish. When it's below it, it's very bearish. So style, because it's quite an important one, the most important of all, people, some people say, I like to give it a big blue line, a red line, so we know where we are. So let's uh, zoom out. You can zoom out by hit, either hitting the buttons here or using your trackpad. Move out there, and as you can see, um, you know, look, it's, it's it's struggled to get above that 200-day moving average line, isn't it? Um, quite a few times, but when it has been significantly above it, then there we are. Oh, it's a bit of a thing there. You can change the. By the way, you can change the um, the time frame on any chart. This is one day, so each candle represents one day's worth of price. If you want, you can do one month worth of price, and uh, like I said, that will bring it in a bit further. So that goes back to every one of these, or you can do one week, if you click that, one week worth the prices, and it gives a, a more definite trend line here. So it takes a while to form these lines, because obviously it's longer, and uh, yeah, they're stronger, but uh, wow, look at that. So each each one of these candles is a week's worth of price action. Let's go back to the default one day, and let's go back to where we are at the moment. So here we are at the moment, and you can see some action happening here that hasn't happened for a while. You know, last time we finished above the 50-day moving average was back in uh, uh, 2015. Was that September? Yeah. August, I mean, August. Didn't stay above it for long, came back down. But the difference was then that, you know, already by the time we got above that, I mean, you know, the moving average is still falling hugely. They're still in a downtrend, you know? And that's not a good sign. So that's another thing to look at moving averages. When they start flattening out, that's a good sign. Now, 
I'm hoping this will start flattening out now. I'm hoping we've hit the bottom here. We'll have a bit of volatility around this level, but hopefully it'll start flattening out, curving around. But what I like here is, look, the, the price action has, has popped above the 20-day moving average, stayed above it, even on this down day here, uh, and when it popped above the 50-day moving it stayed above the 20-day moving average. It hasn't c c come below that 20-day moving average, which is quite nice, you know? So that's a nice level to look at. Some other bullish signs. Let's go, let's go back to, uh, let's have a look at, um, let's go to, if you, if you, by the way, when you s put on indicators on a chart like this at investing.com, you won't lose it, or you don't have to lose it. You can just go to this little button up here and click save and say standard moving averages 20, 50, 1, 2, 5, 200, and say OK. And that will be saved there for you, right there. And if you want to bring it down, just click there and load the chart that you saved. So let's add another chart here. Um, Royal Dutch Shell, B, another big company I quite like. Uh, make sure you've got the London Stock Exchange, not New York there. Click here. And this is a quite bullish as well. Look, you've seen a, a bottom here, which is gapped up from the bottom. Didn't like being down there. Two days down there, gapped up massively. Through the 20-day moving average, through the 50-day, came back, tested the 20-day, and then all of a sudden got back up above the 50-day, which is always a good sign. And the 20-day is now crossing the 50-day, the which is a very good sign. It's also crossed the 125. It's heading towards crossing the 200-day moving average. Now, the most bullish uh, moving average crossover you can get is what's called the Golden Cross, and that's the 50-day moving average um, crossing the 200-day moving average. And... And, and likewise, you know, vice versa, when it's uh, a bearish, if the 50-day is crossing the 200-day on a downward trend, that is also bad. Like you see, all moving averages here are edging upwards. They've bent down, curved around, flattening out. Even 200 is sort of starting to take its time. It will take longer, of course, because it's average over 200 days, but it will take longer. But hopefully, you know, if the price stays above this 200-day moving average, that's a very bearish, uh, bullish bullish sign. It's a good sign. Uh, let's have a look at another stock. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a positive stock. Arm Holdings, uh, where's that been recently? Oh, that's a, a bit of a mess here. Uh, let's have a right move. Um, look at that. So typically, this is a better chart for looking at a bullish stock. Um, so you can see here, let's, let's load in here at the bottom and drag it along. Uh, and look at that. Bottom here, hit the bottom. It's almost like a head and shoulders uh, pattern. Shoulder, head shoulder because this is low here this is lower than the lows here are higher than the previous lows then it broke above you know look at this curving down the 200 moving average then it went it broke above those and as you can see since that happened very bullish it's it's tested the, the 50 day moving average a couple of times it hasn't tested one two five or the 200 let's look at that sell off there this is in january february where we have the biggest sell-off ever start of the year but look at that, it's gone straight back above those moving averages. Again, quite a bullish, um, you know, chart there. That's someone calling me to um, offer me some advice on technical analysis. Listen, I'm no expert, but that's the basics of moving averages and how to set a chart up. I hope that helped. And uh, next week, I'll go over relative strength and MACD, and then we'll go to Pro Real Time, which I'm using, uh, because that in itself will take a bit of a lesson. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, by all means, uh, click the link at YouTube. If you like me, uh, like, like this video, you know, just like it or make a nice comment there. That will help. Thanks very much.